Good evening and thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, my name is Skandar Kopti. I'm a filmmaker and I teach uh, film at uh, NYU Abu Dhabi. And tonight we have uh, Cleo Chavno, a professor of sociology at the Sorbonne University uh, Abu Dhabi. And Cleo is also the co-curator of Cinemana uh, along with me. We have Nadia Alewiyat. Uh, uh, she's a producer and a screenwriter. Uh, she produced a lot of films and one of them is on Netflix now. You can watch it. It's called Mahbas. It's a beautiful film. We screened it, I think, two years ago. Uh, and we have Reem Saleh, who is also a filmmaker, and we screened her film last year. And she's also the Associate Director for External Relations and Partnerships at uh, NYU AD Arts Center. Uh, welcome, everybody, and thank you for uh, being with us. Um, we just watched this, uh, I would say, powerful film. And I would say, although the title suggests that um, it's, it, it's around a character study, after all, the, f the film is named uh, Sophia. And we go into the film thinking that, okay, it's a, it's a portrait of this girl, but in fact, it's more of a portrait of a society. And it seems that in this society, um, or, or, or what we experience in the, in the film is that the situation is a little bit more complex than the usual and the obvious power dynamics uh, that we have between the dominant men and women that have, that have to be led. Um, and uh, it's more about classes and subclasses. And, uh, and although, yes, women, they have, they are controlled eventually by uh, in this case, marriages, so they can advance uh, in their status, in the social status, only through marriage in all cases in the film. So we have uh, the, fr the French husband and we have, um, but also, and we have Omar and everybody, but also there's like the class plays a huge role here. And uh, I, I wanna hear from you how you analyze the whole idea of classes and subclasses and the way it's affecting everybody in the film. You wanna, you want I start? Yeah, whoever, uh, whoever wants to talk, it's like a free flow. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so uh, Sophia is actually a very interesting film in I think the ability of the filmmaker Mariam uh, Ben Barik uh, to actually uh, tackle the issue of social class in a very um, clever and sensitive way. Um, so we have basically, uh, from you know, rough analysis, three classes, uh, which is the basic one, um, that are represented through different characters. Uh, so we have the upper, uh, most privileged classes from, uh, from Morocco, which is represented by uh, this Frenchman, uh, Jean-Luc, and uh, his wife, um, that is the aunt of, of Sophia. And uh, then we have the family of Sophia, which uh, we understand a little bit from, especially from the first scene uh, at, the, at the dinner table, where they are talking about um, starting a business and that look uh, quite important in, in the agricultural field, that they are middle class trying to raise uh, a little bit above that, and especially through uh, economic partnership and, um, and, and partnership with a certain Ahmed that we will discover later in the film, um, who, who is... Uh, actually. And then we have the family of Omar that uh, actually will be uh, thrown into the story uh, without uh, having the, the choice uh, so much. Uh, and there we understand that they are from um, the labor class living in a very uh, poor neighborhood of Casablanca. And, um, and they are like, uh, we can see by various um, indication without actually the filmmaker is rarely mentioning the idea of class. In the dialogue, it's it's often often not like mentioned, but it's quite obvious for the viewer. So um, I think the film is very um, cleverly done in this character narratives, and maybe uh, I will let you talk about this uh, more. But it's a very um, sensitive. They use the, of course the language, and maybe we talk again about it uh, with the Darija and the French, which is uh, always like used to identify who is who and um, how this communication is sometimes very difficult between the, the, the people and not only like at the language level, but also uh, given their social background and economical situation. And then we have the district, the housing conditions, the clothes uh, are also uh, a, a strong indicator with uh, Lena, the cousin, which is wearing very um, 
Western fashion and even like a French kind of uh, way of uh, dressing. Um, and we have uh, the rest, which is wearing more traditional clothing uh, of, uh, of Morocco. So I think it's a very, very interesting take in the social classes and quite rare, actually, I think, to, to be able to do that a very uh, sub with a lot of uh, support. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's true. I mean, um, you talked about the clothing. When they're at home, she discovers that, I mean, Elena tells her that she might be pregnant. So uh, they're both wearing jeans at home, but when we go outside, going to the hospital, so uh, Sophia, she puts on the jalabiya. So she, she hides what she is in fact at home. And obviously the language, uh, the French and the, and the Moroccan uh, Arabic, but there's also uh, this scene when they go to Omar's uh, family. And then even this family cannot understand their own Arabic, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it's even- Yeah, there is a whole misunderstanding and it's uh, uh, Lena actually uh, would try to speak Darija, but they, they say like the mother of Omar, look at her and look at the other and say what she's telling. Uh, I forget exactly how she phrased it, but that's, uh, that's what she mean. And she, there's this, of course a double meaning on what does she say in Darija, but also for the content, what she's talking about. Um, so I, I think it's a very uh, interesting uh, take into uh, how to, to show social class on screen, um, how to, um, to lead the viewer to analyze by themselves uh, without to have to point and say, this is bourgeoisie, this is uh, labor class, this is... Um, so it's a very interesting one. And especially we understand slowly that uh, French and Darija is a very like a red line uh, um, uh, through the film because Sophia is fired from her working place um, uh, because of her level of French that is not good enough, uh, as she mentioned it. And then that's how she met Omar, actually, um, because it's after she was fired. So it's a very uh, interesting uh, scene. And, um, and it leads to... Uh, to um, to, to other uh, aspects of the film uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, ab absolutely. I mean, the, the language is cleverly uh, used here. Um, and also classes are in alliance together. So when Elena takes her to the hospital, she talks to this other doctor because she's a, she's a medical student and this doctor is from her same class and he helps her. So if it was, if it was uh, Sophia going alone, she wouldn't have the same uh, um, contacts, you know, on the same class to be, for someone to be able to help her. So this is also uh, uh, there and ve very subtly, right? Um, and then, uh, yes, sorry, uh, I mean, uh, it's not a discussion between Cleo and I, Reem and uh, Nadia, <laughs> you're free to just uh, jump in whenever you want to. Well, then, I mean, um, go ahead, Nadia. You know, I just want to say that um, uh, also this, uh, I think that um, something in the, um, the way the script is written is really brilliant. And uh, even if you don't know Morocco and you don't know the social classes, you kind of, it's indicated within the, the actions and within the reactions of the characters. So the first time uh, we hear about this Omar, we, the family doesn't know anything about him, just mentioning where he lives everybody goes like what took you there and you kind of understand that okay that's that's from a, a social social class that the family does not want to to deal with and it's a whole nother then the problem goes to another level she's not only pregnant she's pregnant pregnant from a man who lives in this area so so, um, and I think this is, this is really brilliant. So I've never been to Morocco, but the moment you see this reaction, you understand, oh, wow, that is a, a problem, you know? And then from that point on, you understand that this film has actually not two classes, you have a third, you know? So the, the, the aunt is, you know, the top, uh, the top class. And then the family from the first scene, they are aspiring to, to become business partners and somehow live this life. And now they're a bit dragged down because of this, you know, boy who got their, their daughter pregnant and he's from this, um, you know, um, neighborhood that is obviously um, a big trouble mm -hmm. uh, for them. 
And adding to what um, what you are all saying about the frictions in the social classes, and it's quite obvious, and it's also the way it's through marriage that they move from one social class to the other. And this, and Sophia actually is in the middle of this because she's torn into two worlds, the world that she aspires to be part of, or her family aspires to be part of because of how her aunt is, and the, the world of Omar. And eventually she chooses the world of Omar now that I'm thinking about it, she kinds of rebels um, and makes a choice that is probably not favorite, favorable by ev everybody else. Because as you said, everyone is surprised by, by the fact, how do you know this guy? And it's not what we, we, we expected. But at the same time, it was her choice because she's also very well aware that he is the only one who would probably uh, save the, the reputation and the shame that might come from, you know, being being pregnant outside of marriage, and she knows that he will not be able to say no. While if she she uh, reports the real person behind that, it will ruin all the plans of the whole family. So Sophia is stuck in the middle, making big decisions on her own, taking into consideration because she's in the middle and she knows the nuances of these two classes, and she knows that okay, this is the best solution for everybody else. And the scene of her and her cousin, which are kind of from two different worlds, but they're quite related. And it's only through one um, wrong step that everything gets ruined. And she explains to her, you live in your own world, kind of as if she's saying, you live in your own world, you have your ideals, the reality is different. The scenario that we have chosen suits everybody. Yeah. And, and What's interesting about that now takes me to, again, to, to back to screenwriting in a way that we are used to films where the hero rebels against something or realize at the end that, you know, they re, um, realize a, um, what they need to change or what they need to do in order to become the person they want to become. Or, um, and in this film, somehow nobody changes. You know, they, they do in a bit, but... Nobody rebels against what we as an audience think that, yeah, this is, you know, the, um, the rapist has to be, uh, for example, uh, uh, um, um, held accountable and uh, she has to rebel against that. And, but none of that happens. Like it's, it's uh, really reflects reality, you know, because in reality, some, sometimes people do not realize what they need and they just keep going. And, um, and even the, the aunt at the end, there's this scene where the aunt talks to, um, um, to her daughter and tells her like, um, I married your father, I didn't love him, but we needed, I needed to take my, my family um, uh, uh, somewhere else. We need to upgrade and this is what I'm doing and it's the right thing and your, your cousin is doing the right thing. And, but we all know that she's not doing the right thing. She's going to lead a miserable life with a man who doesn't love her, who thinks she's bad of her, who's not going to take care of the kid, who's going to spend the money on, you know, on, prost on prostitu uh, prostitutes, as he says. Uh, but this is, this is life. It's, it's, it's real, you know, which is quite interesting. I mean, what, what, what you said is very, very interesting. And also uh, uh, back to what Reem said, uh, that she makes it, that Sophia makes a decision in order to help her family. Don't you think that she makes this decision because she knows that she doesn't belong? She doesn't meet the expectations of the class that she is about to belong to. She failed in French. She was kicked out of work because she wasn't speaking. Her French wasn't good enough. And she found that the only person that understands her, and she says it, he understood me, right? And then she has a fight with the, her cousin. And she said, you never cared about me. Like you and your rich, class you didn't care about me so maybe it could be this i don't know i want to hear your thoughts about this about the decision of of not blaming ahmed and going with this invented story uh, uh as, as a chance or as a way to belong to to the class that she feels that she belongs to and not the imposed class that her family is, is aspiring to be in um okay i'll Sorry, I spoke too much, but I'm just going to comment on that. And then, um, uh, but uh, I feel for me, Sophia is the only one who does not really want to upgrade, up, upgrade herself with class. 
she doesn't care about this. She likes the guy. She genuinely likes the guy. And she wants to help her family from one side, but she's not looking. She's looking for a stable life. She wants a stable life with this guy who is sweet, who she thinks is genuine. And she's a bit delusional, of course. Uh, but, um, but I think she's the only one who does not really care about the, the, the class more than just looking for you know an imaginary happiness in, in her mind this is, this is uh, absolutely and she knows she knows her society well she knows the culture well she knows what suits everybody so she's she's she took a decision that suits the whole family but at the same time that's not where she belongs she does not belong to that upgrade at least from the choice of Omar uh, and she cornered him in a way, but she genuinely likes him. And actually, the last scene in the film is a big indicator, the wedding scene. Um, she, is, she is happy and she looks genuinely happy despite everything. He is the one who is, you know, one feels really bad for him because he is also a victim of, all, of this whole game. And she's, she's totally fine with it. And she has this big smile and she's waving and she wants to put on the act and it suits her better than trying to fake becoming um, uh, a girl from a different class like her aunt and, and her cousin, which obviously with all the indicators that you all mentioned that did, did not work for her. I think there is something like this, this last scene is very rich because she also look at Ahmed, uh, her, her. Uh, the, the, the person that uh, attacked her. And I feel there is kind of a, like um, claiming back her narrative and claiming back her identity. And um, I mean, you know, every survivor is choosing their own way to survive what happened to them. And I think um, Sophia here is, uh, I mean, it's a mysterious character, so it's always difficult to make some uh, projection on, on the character. But at least how I, I saw it is that she she's also defying him and trying to tell him you don't define me I choose my own uh, path I choose my own way I choose the man I'm going to marry even though it doesn't look like a clever choice from my family point of view even though he don't want it and he show it in public but she chooses them and yeah of course he, he trapped him in a way but she for her I think she chose him and she trusted him uh, to be his wife and the father of, of this child um, so I, I kind of like also this kind of, you know, uh, right, uh, reverse idea that she's not uh, seeking for uh, revenge or she's not like, uh, um, she, she's just like trying to, to be her own and trying who she wants and that not her, what her family wants or not what this guy wants because he knew what he will put on her. Um, that because the fact she's pregnant make it out in the open, but if not, it will have anyway a ruin in a way, her life. So I think it's quite interesting, this um, this change of perspective and saying, I'm not a victim, I choose my own path and, and you know, kind of... Uh... Yes, it's, it's very interesting. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I, I analyze it uh, uh, also in a similar, but a little bit different way as, as an allegory to, uh, you know, losing control, like being raped. Uh, so it's all about control. Uh, 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 and then regaining your control, but in this uh, oppressed post-colonial mindset where you have to hurt others, to oppress others in order to regain your sense of, of control, right? And this is the, the oppressed mind. And this is what she does, Sophia, eventually. She's, she's oppressing someone from a lower class than her, Omar, that she corners him. He cannot really say what he wants to do. And she's victorious. She's there very high, I mean, visually, she's on this, like, they're being carried, equal, she's in the same level uh, like him, but he's unhappy and she's happy. Uh, so this is, uh, and if, if we're talking about allegories and, and symbolism to, to the politics and, and, and uh, colonialism, you know, let's talk about the, 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 the French husband, this French husband that we talk about, and he's never, never there. And also this, perhaps it's a, like a, an allegory or, or maybe a direct, Link to uh, but he's everywhere at the same time. He's everywhere. He's controlling he paid for the wedding. He paid for the house. He paid for the education of of everybody. I know he's he's uh, he's there and not there. Mm. Yes. So it's 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 again it's colonialism that is there that is dictating the values, the rules. This is why this is why they it dictates the, the classes, right? So I speak French. I dress up in Western French clothes. 
I am better than others. So I, I think it also has to do with it. So if, if we think that this is the case, so we, we need to start looking for a lot of different allegories and, and, and sim symbolism in, in this film. The, the whole pregnancy itself uh, and uh, this thing that I've discovered lately, which is the denial of pregnancy, which does not show and everything that happens afterwards. I mean, let's not forget that the whole thing started because of the law, the law that uh, criminalizes um, uh, birth outside of wedlock. And this law itself, which is enforced, is the one that kind of pushed all the narrative. And then you have all of the other nuances that and the frictions in the in the society and the the French or or the superior white um, uh, mindset who uh, pushes the narrative to a completely different place. The, the, she's really smart in not making it seem like we're talking about a victim of rape and that's it and all the consequences she goes beyond this and makes everyone responsible somehow of their fate but their fate is also dictated by all of these little things um, that are combined but it's important to mention that all the whole thing started because otherwise if if she does not find a father or a husband she's going to go to prison. Then let's find solutions. Okay, what do we do? Then we have the social structure. Then we have these uh, social classes. We have the family pressure. What do we do? We need to find, we need to come up with something uh, creative that suits everybody and push the narrative totally to a completely different place. While what we expect is to go after the rapist and you know hold him accountable, which does not happen. But at the same time, and this is the the, the but thing. But it's not also happening most of the time in the real life. So it's yeah. actually very uh, realistic, I think. Uh, in yeah. the film, you know the statistics everywhere in the world. It's like uh, it's like really, really, really more than minor. Um, so it's it's actually quite realistic. The choice of actually, you know, you can have this whole narrative in the film about yeah. Um, victims seeking for justice. And you have a lot of films, actually. Uh, I don't know for Arab films, uh, I don't have one in mind, but um, you have films about this uh, victims taking, uh, seeking for revenge and, and going after the rapist or going after men in general. Uh, but here she took a completely different uh, angle because I think she wants also to stick to reality. And what is happening that most of the time the victim are not seeing anything because they know it's pointless because either the justice system is not going to back them up, either the family is not backing them, uh, either they don't want this to define their whole life and it's up to uh, each one of them. But uh, I think it's quite realistic that she didn't go for like a, a fantasy of, of uh, as kind, this kind of secret that will actually be welcomed by everybody. But like she could have. Is, going to, uh, is saying, and, and we know that Lena is not realistic in terms of, you know, what you have to do in life. So she's the only one who say, you have to say it, you have to. And the two mothers understand and they know it's not going to, to be um, useful. But also, if you take a step back, when she, was, when she was at the police station, her father invented this narrative of her being raped by Omar, which could have worked, but it's a lie. But also being with him was a lie. But she decided to go uh, with a romantic lie to kind of um, lock him in in this fantasy that she created in her head although she could have said that he raped her and they would have maybe got got into the same um to the same um resolution which is i don't know what's the role the like the uh, in morocco but i know like for example in jordan and lebanon the rapist marry the victim so but you know this is another thing that uh, i don't know if it's the same in morocco law yeah, it's, the it's the same yeah so she could have she could have married him too by just going by 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 redeeming herself and 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 telling you know at least like the, um, her family everybody that she's innocent, but she decided to take that black spot of being um, of of engaging in a in, in a sexual activity outside of marriage by um, not by force and still marry him, which is which is quite interesting um, to think about. Poor Omar is, is cornered any, in any scenario. Yeah, he's, he's cornered, but she decided to corner him in a, in a fantasy that she created in her head. 
and just live. because she need to rewrite her, her narrative she need to rewrite her story and and she want that she want to to be you know someone normal she don't have to have this label so omar is kind of the victim but he's the only way actually for her not to um to be uh, viewed by her family as a victim vi being viewed by the, the society so for me it's a very powerful actually move even though there is of course consequences and, and uh, an oppressed person yeah. as a result um but it's a it's a very uh, it's a power move for me Well, it's interesting because you have two victims. One of is the victim of gender and uh, injustice, which is uh, Sophia, and then you have Omar, who is a gen who is a victim of uh, social uh, discrepancies and um, and poverty. Classes, yeah, interesting. We, we we started having some questions from the audience, and uh, uh, we have one question uh, so far. Weddings usually signify a beginning, but the movie ended with a celebration. Quote to quote, is there significance in that as you see it? So ending the film with, uh, with weddings are, are are both beginning and, and end uh, actually because they are always the beginning of a certain part of your life, but the ending of another. Uh, so especially like even for like chosen marriage where you choose your partner. But it's even more the case when, for so many people in the world, you don't choose your partner. So it's sometimes definitely the end of, uh, you know, a um, certain part of their life as a children uh, or as a kid. So I think weddings are both. And uh, the movie maker here show us that for her, a wedding can be an end. Actually, uh, it's the, it's the end maybe of a traumatic event for um, um, uh, Sophia. Maybe that's the way she she felt. But it's also uh, the end for Omar in his kind of freedom and and um, and his um, ability to choose his life. So for me, it's a it's an end of different things. But also the celebration in that sense is is a fake celebration because all the 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 shots that we see, all the characters and how they're reacting to the celebration, we know that it looks on the outside it looks like a celebration, but of course it's it's a beginning of of, of bigger problems. Um, uh, for for everybody. Um, so the mother, for example, the mother of the bride has to live with the fact that she they are partnering with her, partnering up with uh, 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 the rapist of her daughter, for example, you know, and um, the cousin. And so everybody somehow, um, nobody's actually happy or, or, or celebrating in that sense. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting context as a resolution where you bring, I mean, weddings, uh, in film also bring everybody together. So you see most of the ca characters gathered in one space. And in the case of uh, Mariam in this film, it's also the resolution. So as you mentioned, you have different resolutions, but they're all in one space celebrating this fake wedding. You have Sophia's, Omar's resolution, the partners, and um, and it's it's an ending and and, not probably the, the happy for everyone, but at least it's the resolution where you can gather all these characters and see them face to face um, dealing with that reality. Uh, and, I think, and I think it's a beautiful scene because everybody's there for the wrong reasons. Yes. <laughs> no, no, nobody's there for the right reasons. Nobody's there yeah. for love, you know, or for wanting to be there. It's just a, this invisible force Uh, that dominates, controls, and regulates everything in those people's life, you know? And it's and the tools that they use are very obvious, and they talk about it. It's like gossip, and they plan. They plan everything. They plan the wedding in such a way that people will not talk, right? So it's a, it's a very harsh and strict system that regulates itself. Uh, yeah, I wanted to say beautifully, but you know what I mean, like in a mathematical way almost. And nobody's happy. And this is why this ending is, is very uh, strong, but it's not actually the ending ending. There's another question about the ending and um, I don't have a name, but uh, they say that they were very intrigued about the ending and that leaves us like that without going back basically to Sophia and what happens with her and, uh, uh, and her daughter and the consequences of, of being born to this family. And then we, we shift to uh, Lena and her mother and suddenly the film shifts to them. Uh, 
So what do you think about this choice, uh, script writing wise, uh, philosophically, uh, like uh, the last note of the film? Uh, I see there's a question about Ahmed. Uh, I think uh, maybe some, there is a very, a very small scene with him at the beginning. And it's true that uh, if at the beginning you, you don't really pay attention about him, you, maybe you, you won't understand exactly who he is in the film because it's very short at the beginning, but he's a, a partner, a business partner with the father of Sophia. Uh, so that's why uh, he's like, he's appearing in the film. We see him like two, two scenes, actually the first one and the last one, uh, the wedding and the dinner at the beginning. Um, and so the explanation that why she's covering up for him, it's because if she accused him of uh, what he actually did, uh, she's making like, it's giving, of course, it's compromising the economic and the partnership for her father and it's actually a big uh, opportunity for him to uh, to climb up the the social uh, to reach this uh, social uh, upper class so that's why she's uh, covering up for him because she don't want to put her father into uh, and her family and the whole family into a, um, a big uh, economic mess uh, so that's why and uh, the first thing actually i think also is like uh, they are really talking about uh, how big the project is. So we understand it's just not like a, a regular colleague. It's really a big, big partnership. And, and the wedding is a make-believe uh, act uh, where everyone agrees to lie. And even the guests and even the society knows. I mean, it's, this is not something that you can hide, that she had a... Had a um, had a child and immediately after a wedding, people will understand. But it's like saying, let's all agree to... Uh, believe that lie and celebrate it and life goes on. And that's quite interesting because this is how you hide things and move on based on the interest of everybody else. And people just go along with it. As long as you put on an act, that's fine. Okay. I think at some point in the film, they mentioned that they will pretend that they already married uh, religiously, but they didn't do a, a wedding celebration. So I think that's how they try to cover it up. But it's a it's a well known trick uh, in the absolutely famous religious marriage that happened uh, before. Absolutely. And it's all, it's all it's all about uh, covering it up, right? It's all about like the the facade that we put. It's all about what people know and whatever we keep within the family, whatever we don't expose, never existed, right? So this is, and the whole film is driven, is driven by this. Uh, there was a well, it's just a, a social game, you know, you have norms and as soon as you derive from those norms, you will have to go back in, in a way or another. So the only way uh, of this one to go, go in again, it will be marrying uh, uh, one of the guy. So either she married a rapist, uh, because in the law, it will be one of the outcome. Either she married a guy that recognized the kid and it will cover it up. But no one is, no one is, Unaware, everybody knows, but everybody yeah. pretends that it's uh, she followed the rule at least. Yeah, uh, I want I want to go back to uh, the question uh, we had earlier about uh, the last scene with Lena and her mother, and the fact that the film leaves Sophia up there in the air and then cuts to 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 them talking about. I mean, as if we're switching protagonists or were we switching protagonists? Was it always the story of society and not really of Sophia? So what do you think was uh, the intention behind this, this scene? Um, you remember like talking? Uh... Yeah, I feel like, um, uh, yeah, this, uh, this scene somehow takes us out, as you said, like we're following Sophia and the cousin and, and we almost never left them alone instead of just really tiny moments where the cousin talks a doctor, the doctor or just a small thing. Um, uh, but, um, but this scene was um, taking us out of, 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 Sophia's, of Sophia's narrative somehow to... I personally don't um, um, didn't feel the need to do it, but that's my 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 personal my personal my personal opinion. Um, but I would say that was there to tell us a little bit about the aunt because the aunt is always this 
facade of, you know, uh, power and control. And, you know, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving. And that was a place where we somehow could connect with her, understand where she's coming from um, in a bit and understand why she is so rigid when it comes to Sophia, because for her, she kind of did not something similar, but again, she did it marry for love and um, 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 somehow she connects with Sophia in that sense. Um, um, so yeah, this is what I personally think. It's, 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 uh, it's a never end ending story. So we're back to square one. So everybody's doing it. So let's keep doing it. As we say in Arabic, uh, uh, how do you say it? Adatul uh, Taqalid, right? Everybody's imitating everybody without really and it's for the best, you know, and it's for the best, you know, it's for the and best. It's for the best, it's yeah. For, it's for the best. It's for her the best. It's good for her. It's good for, she She keeps saying, it's good for her. It's good for Omar. It's good for, so it's good for everybody. You know what I mean? Um, so. Yeah. And it puts Lena also in a position where she understands that she's the product of this. Like whatever she is enjoying and the education and he, her studying medicine and all of this, which is a, a, a typical stereotype of what an upper class would aspire for their children. Uh, she's the product of it and she cannot rebel against it because this gives the chance to someone else to, to, to enjoy this, the luxury of moving classes. And what is more important, love or ethics and because you, there is a loss of ethics in so many things here uh, or you know saving your family and moving to an upper class and enjoying you know living in um in this uh lifestyle uh, it does this scene does clarify to lena specifically that what you're rebelling against you're the product of yeah and you have to be grateful for yeah. yeah, this is what and I think. It's the question of actually of privileges in general that is embodied in in Lena because yes, yeah, you have this white privilege uh, as being a half half and looking like uh, a white person, white person, but also economic privileges. And it's uh, for me, I, I really took it as you know also telling us like, okay, you see, with your own privilege, uh, you might feel that you have you know the freedom to do whatever you want. You you have the freedom to navigate inside a complicated low system that disadvantage women, but because you have money, you can play around. And we see it with the, the, the ant that give money. And then, you know, we understand it was mysteriously solved or at least uh, without prison time. But at the same time, uh, we are uh, in, like, Sophia is telling her to do that with all her privilege, she cannot understand her choices. That, you know, at some point, because you are so much like uh, entitled and you have so, you are so much privilege, you cannot understand the life of others and the way they will do their own choices. So it's a very um, humbling, I think, also listen, uh, I mean, to the West or to white people or to uh, whatever, whoever have any kind of privilege uh, about judging other uh, choices and uh, the, the choices of people who don't, doesn't have so many options. Um, and uh, in that, I feel that this discussion between Lena and Sophia is are always very, very meaningful. And there yeah. is more than just what is being said. There is um, much more. Yes. Okay. Th thank you so much, uh, Cleo, Nadia, and Reen, and the audience to stay with us. Thank you so much. It was a lovely discussion. I, I wish we had more time. Uh, please join us for our next Cinemana screening. We're screening uh, the brilliant You Will Die at 20 by uh, Amjad Abul Ala. Uh, on December 7th at 7.30. Uh, you can get free tickets. It's again, it's gonna be an online uh, screening with a discussion with Amjad uh, Q&A. Uh, get your free tickets online. Thank you very much and see you soon. Thank you, good night. Thank you, Rim and Nadia. Thank you.